Welcome back to the Show and Design Studio. I'm Ian and I'm here to talk about how fountain pens work. Let's get to it. So let's talk about cartridges and converters. So here we have a cartridge and here we have a converter. The converter is a filling mechanism that essentially functions the same as a cartridge. Its job is to hold ink and the, the mechanism on the back is just to fill it with ink. Okay, great. Um, these are fully sealed systems. Theoretically, they're not supposed to have any way for air to get into these cartridges, and that's really important, and I'll show you why. We have a bulb, like a little filling syringe. If I fill this up with some inky water, it doesn't fall out the front when I shake it. It's held in there because there's nothing to replace the ink. If air was allowed into this cartridge, all the ink would fall out the front. Let me show you how that works. Got another one of these here that I poked a hole in with this needle, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up. So this is full of, of inky water and we've got a needle here. And again, it's, it's a sealed system because the needle is still inside of it. But when I pull this needle out, it's gonna make a mess. All the ink falls out the front because there's air that's allowed to displace and it's no longer a sealed system. There's no longer a vacuum in the back of that cartridge. That vacuum is, um, can cause your fountain pens not to work and you know having a hole in the back of your cartridge or another way for air to get into the cartridge can be another reason why your fountain pen floods out the front and is also not a great, not a great fountain pen. So that's a primer on why the cartridge needs to be sealed and what air ingress or lack of air ingress can do to your cartridges. You need air to be able to flow back in the cartridge, but not too much. Okay, great. Let's talk about nibs for a second. This is a nib unit, and it's made up of three parts. It's made up of the feed, this back black finned plastic part, the nib itself, and then the housing. The housing's function is to hold the nib against the feed. It's a really important function because those two need to have a really tight interface, and I'll tell you why in a moment. The nib has got Where's my camera? Wait for it, there we go, fantastic. Anyways, the nib, as you know, has a slit down the center. The slit is really important because it, um, it's, it's actually a diminishing slit. It's not a straight walled slit. And the reason it diminishes is because of capillary action. The closer those two tines of the nib are to each other, the more water or your water-based inks wanna to flow towards the front of the tip of the pen. As the walls get closer, the forces are higher. Very important. And the tip of the pen, you know, it's, it's tipped with the material that helps make the, the front of the pen larger, um, helps it make it easier to grind, makes the writing experience smoother because it's got a nice big radius and it's not just a sharp piece of stamped steel, um, unless you have a stub and then it's a piece of steel that's been rounded off and, and radius. But the tipping's material, uh, or the tipping is, its purpose is to create the size of the writing experience that you're gonna have with the pen. Let's talk about the feed. The feed has a number of slits on it, and it also has um, a slit that runs from the back of the pen all the way down to the front. Uh, I made a little drawing here to help us with this. So we've got the nib in green, we've got blue. This is the main ink flow path from the, from the cartridge all the way up to the tip of the fountain pen, and then we have the yellow fins and the orange feed. The yellow fins are essentially designed to slow down and saturate with ink. So you've got a big amount of ink near the nib, green. So while you're writing, if there weren't fins in your fountain pen and there was only this blue flow path from the back of the cartridge, or from the cartridge to the front of the pen, your pen would dry out really fast. Like you'd be writing with it for one second and the feed wouldn't be able to keep up. It wouldn't be able to supply enough ink to the front. So those fins are there to help regulate and help your pen from not drying out. Um, there needs to be a way for air to get into your cartridge and allow the ink to flow out, just as we saw with those bulb syringes in that demonstration. Different manufacturers have done this different ways. So regardless of your pen, there has to be some flow path, and some of them are really clever. Some of them are blocked by ink. So imagine your feed saturates, and when it's done saturating and it's ready to make a great writing experience, it's blocked the flow of air back into the cartridge. And that means that it's gonna hold all that ink against the nib and it's not gonna create more of a problem where it's dripping out of the front of the pen. Dripping out of the front of the pen means there's too much air being allowed into the pen. Um, 
Another thing that's affecting uh, this relationship between the air and the, the capillary action in the front, front of the nib that controls the writing experience is a, is a force balance. So imagine the capillary action between the nib and the feed, that force is high. So as you go and shake the pen, as long as that shaking action isn't high enough to overcome the capillary action and the forces between the nib and the feed, it's not gonna drip out. But the minute you touch it to paper, the ink wants to flow because it's being wicked into something uh, like paper or another medium. Um, if you don't have ink flow to the tip, because let's say the walls of a slit are even, and it's not, the capillary action only takes it to a certain point, it's not gonna take it all the way to the tip, your fountain pen's not gonna flow. Uh, let's say you have some oil or some dirt or contaminants inside of that slit, your fountain pen's not gonna flow because there's no way for that ink to reach the paper and be sucked onto the paper. So yeah, that's my explanation on how a fountain pen works. Thanks for watching. If I missed something, which I'm sure I did, cause I'm you know relatively new to fountain pens, I've only been into them for a couple years now. Um, feel free to put something in the comments, add something in there and maybe I'll reshoot this video in, uh, in six months and it'll be even better. But uh, for now, uh, that's my best explanation of how a fountain pen works uh, or how I understand a fountain pen to work. And uh, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting my work. Um, if you haven't heard of my work, I, I run a small manufacturing studio in Philadelphia where I machine pens, mostly fountain pens. And uh, yeah, check out the website. It's in the, uh, it's in the description below. Thanks a lot.